Thanks for watching. I am Mark Daniels. I've been fortunate to work in a Christian-owned and operated company for nearly two, or nearly 20 years. My boss is an amazingly mature believer whose deep faith is apparent to everyone that he knows and meets. There's a palpable sense of security in our workplace that is rare in the media business because we know for sure that our manager loves Jesus and will always put people and their needs first. And as I'm sure my guests today will agree, for an organization to be kingdom-minded, you need a committed Christian right at the top. But what does a kingdom-minded organization look like? Why do we need more Christ-centered businesses anyway? And doesn't such a mixing of faith and the world put a business owner at risk in today's politically correct and litigious society? Well, Mark Griffin is a Christian business consultant and career coach residing in Lancaster County, PA. He has an interesting career path, as we'll discuss in a moment. He's an author and speaker with broad experience in companies large and small, Christian-focused and secular, and he makes a case for the latter in his book, How to Build Kingdom-Minded Organizations. And uh, Mark Griffin, welcome to The Mark Daniels Show. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, of course, we all know the, the stories. Uh, many of us have personally experienced the, the prohibition of uh, expressing our faith at work. Public school teachers, for example, can't wear the cross, can't have a Bible on their desk. In our school district, uh, public school teachers need to sign a piece of paper that says, I won't talk about my faith or inculcate it in what I'm teaching to the, uh, to the young kids. So, sure. Uh, is a kingdom-minded uh, organization really still possible in today's world? I absolutely know that it's still possible in, in, in today's politically correct world. And I also know that there's a lot of business owners out there, company owners that are Christians that are looking forward to sharing their faith, but doing it in a respectful way with their employees. But it is absolutely possible to do so. Let's take a couple of moments and define the term, if we may. What, what is a kingdom-minded organization? What's it look like? Sure, when I talk about a kingdom-minded organization, I talk about an organization that puts Christ front and centered in everything that they do. I also talk about an organization that has a mission, a vision and values that the company operates within. I coach the, the business owner and the employees to include some great language in their mission, vision, and values that reflect Christ. And oftentimes they th say things like we're a Bible-believing uh, ownership or we were founded on Christian principles. And many times I find that the employees really appreciate that and they're looking for an organization that has those values. Of course, as I mentioned before, many of us work within organizations that aren't Christian-focused or kingdom-minded, and uh, we know how difficult it can be to live and express our faith in those uh, circumstances and settings. Talk about, though, for those who are business owners, uh, perhaps listening in right now, and are thinking about orienting their company, sure. uh, being a little bit more uh, forward in their faith, what kind of benefits they can expect to enjoy from becoming a kingdom-minded oh, organization? The benefits are absolutely incredible. I've been doing human resources for over 25 years. I've worked in secular companies. I've, I've, I've worked in Christian-owned organizations. The principles in which we use come from high-performing organizations like Quaker Oats, Merck, larger corporations, but they're principles that we wrap around the faith aspects of Christ and infuse them into the human resource programs. It helps with your absenteeism, it helps uh, with your performance, it helps with your quality, it also helps with your customer service, your interactions with the community. And again, I, I, I just want to encourage your, your viewers that something like this is possible, it's not illegal, that when you express your faith and you say that I believe in something, that's not illegal. The, it becomes illegal when you tell employees they have to believe in something. And we know as Christians, as Christ followers, that we never force people to believe anything. We're the salt and the light and people see that and they're attracted to Christ. So that's the difference on the, uh, the legality piece. I can tell you for sure from experience that the productivity and morale in a Christian-focused, uh, uh, kingdom-minded organization is much higher. Absolutely. And in today's tumultuous business times, employees need a hope and a future. They need a, a, an employer that they can go to and feel like that employer is going to employ them for a time, support their families, support the churches, and support the communities. 
I just happen to have here on the desk with me a book called How to Build <laughs> Kingdom-Minded Organizations. And we started to talk about some of those uh, principles. I wanted to walk through a few of them uh, while we have this time together here. First of all, uh, talking about aiming for the best. And boy, if that isn't important, uh, I have to admit that over time, many Christian organizations have developed a reputation for being somewhat less than devoted to uh, the absolute excellent product and sure. service that they can provide. And, and we need, really need to aim high because people are watching. We do need to aim high. And, and God wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to be wealthy. He wants us to grow. And when the leadership aims high, the employees follow suit. We, we, we have a lot of innuendo on television and in, in the press that our employees and workers across the United States are lazy, they're disenchanted, they're angry. That's not necessarily true. What we lack, Mark, is a lack of leadership to harness that energy to get people moving in the right direction. 105% of the time, people want to do uh, the right thing for companies. They just don't know how to do it. Part of these principles, sharing Jesus in the workplace, so Christian leaders must be modern-day apostles. Uh, as we said, aiming for the best. Be diligent to avoid mediocrity. I love that. Uh, the abundant life in the workplace. Leave the sheaves behind and be rewarded. What do you mean by that? I, I, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, of, of, uh, again, I've been in business for 20, 25 years in, in human resources. I, I've been exposed to companies that say, hey, we're a Christian company, and, you know, they walk, the, they walk around professing to be, but they're not. They're, 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 they're not giving back to the communities. They're not tithing money back to the community. They're not uh, feeding their employees, water their employees. They're not developing their employees. So I really express that we need to give back to the kingdom, that it's great to be prosperous, but we do need to give back, uh, and, and especially so to our employees. Management must step up. Now, I'm in management, and uh, I understand how important that is, and I understand what happens when management doesn't step up. We can't expect anyone to follow when we're not leading. That's, that's exactly right. And again, that goes back to where we are as a country, as a nation, with our business falling apart, political systems. Uh, we have issues. We, uh, we, Boy Scouts are out. We don't have a lot of people going through Boy Scouts. We have lack of leadership training in high school. Everybody wins. Everybody gets a trophy. The, the, the difficulty we're having is we, we have no leaders coming up uh, as a country, as a nation. Well, you led into one question I was going to ask you about, and that simply was uh, rewarding the hard work of our hard workers. Uh, we have a whole generation coming up through that has that sense that everyone who participates gets the reward. And uh, sometimes it feels a little uncomfortable to reward those who are performing best for us. It's easier in the sales domain, but there sure. are other uh, areas of a, a corporation where people really need to be identified and rewarded for what they're doing. Absolutely. And that's where I step in. Part of my, my consulting practice is around performance management, perf uh, managing performance for success. It's helping the owners, the management team, and the employees develop a performance-based culture. The core of that is having employees develop goals and objectives, having them set reasonable goals and objectives so that they know what they need to work against, not just leadership pushing it down. And that does make a difference. When you have that entitlement atmosphere, when you get them involved in setting it, it changes the dynamics of the corporation. And this is so important, yet as you know, because you're consulting many companies, and you can see this, I'm sure, the tyranny of the urgent, especially in the past couple of years when the workforces have had to be downsized, and uh, middle managers especially are taking on both a performance role and a management role. Absolutely. Uh, working more hours and working more within those hours. And the administrative the burden thrown on top of it. Exactly. Uh, well, we, we don't think about these things anymore. We put them in place. It's kind of like uh, setting a, uh, a toy boat uh, a sailing across the lake. We push it away and we expect it to go on its own sure. across the other sure. side. I mean, we, we really have to keep after it. We do. We do. We need to circle back, have some objectives, and get everybody on the same uh, boat. And, and one way, of course, that, that uh, this happens quite frequently is with the mission and vision statements. Uh, most companies have them. They'll put them on the website. Maybe they'll hang them on a banner on the wall. Sure. So when you go to the, the, the lunchroom and pull something out of the fridge, you'll see it hanging up there every once in a while. We establish these. We do it with good intent. And then we never look back at them again. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the whole premise of my book because my experience has been I was an employee at one organization and the executives left. They went down to the Caribbean, they strategized, they came back with this great mission, vision, 
values. They rolled it out. And I'm, I'm a senior manage, manager of the organization. I wasn't a part of it, and I had no idea how to even implement it as part of the, the company uh, strategy. So I coach leadership that include the employees in the development of the mission, vision, values. Yeah. Do brainstorming and bring it all the way down to all the employees. Let them be a part of it. And then most importantly, integrate that mission, vision, and values into everything that you do. As you hire people, hand them a copy. Build it into your hiring process. In your performance review process, the behavior should reflect what your values are in your organization. There's all these key human resource elements you can build the mission, vision, values into. I do want to talk about the values piece here in a couple of moments, but uh, going back to the mission and vision statements, as most people put them on their, their websites, so often when I read these, it's really nice language and it's nice poetry, but sometimes we put mission statements together based on an ideal, something that's really not achievable. Sure. I think that's why we start to ignore them over time. Well, uh, that's part of it and, and not having employees involved, but mission is really clearly what you do every day. Right. Vision should be where you want to be in five years. It's that simple, we overcomplicate it. You bring 10 consultants in, they, they get everybody trying to go in the right direction, but it's really what you do every day. So people know, when I come to work, this is what I do. This is why we're here. Believe it or not, Mark, I walk into organizations, I'll pull some employees to the side and say, what do you do every day? What's the main reason why you're doing this? They have no idea. Right. It blows you away. You go, well, why are you even here? Well, I get paid. But when they know the mission, when they know the mission is to serve by a certain date, a certain product with a certain quality, they want to they achieve that. We still have a great American work culture left. Yeah, there is a difference between your day-to-day -day duties and what it is you're there to accomplish. That's true. That's for sure. I do want to talk about uh, the V word values because it gets thrown around a lot these days. What does it mean in the workplace? Our, our guest is Mark Griffin. We're talking about how to build kingdom-minded organizations. We'll come back after a break. This is the Mark Daniels Show. We shall return. Back on the Mark Daniels Show, my guest is Mark A. Griffin, author and speaker and uh, HR consultant. And uh, before we went to the break, I was starting to talk about uh, values. Uh, companies need core values. We, we throw the word values around in the media a lot these days, and we've kind of dumbed down their meaning. So what kind of core values are we talking about, and how do we determine what they are and focus on them in the, in the workplace? A, a lot of values that organizations have are biblical values, and integrity, trustworthiness. Um, being truth tellers. There, there's a variety of different values that are mimicked uh, biblically that companies include. In fact, there's many secular companies, if you look at their values, their biblical values as well. Uh, what it does is it helps employees, and especially new employees, see what behaviors are acceptable and what the company values as behaviors being new to the organization. But many of them are, again, the same as secular organizations. In the HR uh, recruiting process, you need to be able to communicate these values in such a way that you'll attract the people you're looking for. How, how do you do that in a practical sense? Well, what's awesome is when you're working for a Christian-owned or organization as an HR professional and you're out recruiting people and you hand somebody a mission, vision, and values, and it says that it's a company founded on biblical principles, and again, it's non-offensive. It's not saying you must believe in these biblical principles. You'd be amazed at how many people light up and they're like, wow, I can finally find a company that I think I can trust. I want to, I'm not a Christian. I'm curious about Christ, but I don't know enough yet to really have a relationship with Christ. That happens a lot. Although sometimes somebody may come in and they say, I don't want anything to do with this, you know, and, and they get nervous and they freak out and they get scared and they leave. Well, that might just be a problem waiting to happen anyway, but it's not something that's illegal, you're not causing yourself an issue, you're just sharing that these are our values, this is what the company's founded on, are you interested in this type of work, uh, work atmosphere? I do have to say I have a new appreciation for HR. My wife works in HR. Oh, she does. And so she brings those stories home to me. So I understand sure. that what you do is not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> I have a great appreciation for it. Well, back again to uh, the kingdom-minded, the, the Christian workplace. One of the things that really kind of falls by the wayside in so many companies is the evaluation process. Now, the bigger corporations, they have something in place. 
uh, managers are generally managing and not also doing along the way. So uh, it's part of the, the build-in process. But if you're somebody who's a working manager like I am, I have a number of people who work in my department. I have not evaluated their performance probably in six years. Sure. And without that... Well, I have a phenomenal program that's perfect for you where it's employee-based and employees drive the program. And, and simply stated, if the employees don't do the program and maintain the program, the employees can't get an increase every year. So you empower your employees to set up their own review, meet with, they, they have to take the initiative to meet with you, Mark, and if they fail to do that, then they're failing on, on their review process. But we put it in, in, into place that the employee is the one that's responsible for the reviews. Yeah, performance evaluations are like the last thing we get to. I mean, it's on the list, and I think it's, about it, it's on the day Nobody timer. likes them. Exactly, and it's uncomfortable in many circumstances. So, And, and, and another uh, thing that's very difficult is to, to step back and look at our company as other people do. Sure. We have been so into our own thing for the past 18 mm -hmm. years where I am right now. It's not that it's a toxic environment or things are going wrong, it's just that we have not been able to look at ourselves the way somebody from the outside exactly. would, and that's really why they need people like you. That's right. That's right, and you need a pro program that's simplistic, that's not going to take you 10 hours a year to administer. But you really have an obligation as, as a Christian to provide your employees with feedback. And they have an obligation to give their manager feedback on how they're feeling. And you, as a leader, executive teams at that organization need to move that organization forward for the employees. We, we have a fiduciary responsibility to do that as leadership. Okay. Well, say you're a company already in place. Uh, you've pretty much been operating as most companies do. You borrowed somebody else's mission statement and put it on sure. your website. And, and uh, you've kind of caught this vision and you want to begin to move in the direction of being a kingdom-minded organization. What are some of the first steps we can take as an established company? You know, company? Mark, that's a great question because I, I'm asked that all the time. It, it, it's fairly simplistic. We, we have an audit that we use. It's about nine pages in length. It takes between 10 and 20 hours to accomplish. We come into the organization and we look from soup to nuts. We look at exactly what you're doing in recruitment, training and development, your mission, vision, value. We evaluate it and then we put a gap analysis in to say here's some key things that you need to do over the next coming years, not weeks or days, but years to get moving towards being a kingdom-minded kingdom -minded organization. Well, what are some of those things? So, some, of the, some of the things that we find is you don't have a recruitment program at all. It's ad hoc. It's, you're in crisis mode. You have a, a position vacant. You don't have a job description for it. You're not sharing your mission, vision, values. Nobody knows what really the person needs to be doing in the job. So something as simple as that needs to be done. So we create a job description program. We make sure that the job description is in place before you go to hire. We make sure your hiring process is legal and legitimate so that you're not causing an issue as you recruit people. Wow. I, I wish there uh, was readily available uh, some kind of advisement for those who do hire on occasion. It's not a regular part of their, they're not working in HR, they're working in management, they need to bring somebody on board. They haven't interviewed in a while. They haven't done that sure. process. There's, there really is a right way and a wrong way to do there that. There is a right wrong way. I, I found <laughs> over, the, over time that I was talking more about me and letting them talk less about them. Therefore, I brought people in that agreed with me about me and I didn't know anything about them. Exactly. Okay. And that's the key. You want the, you want the candidate to talk 80% of the time. Right. And oftentimes managers get nervous and they talk the whole time and they're like, wow, I really like that person. Yeah, because you heard yourself talking for right you know, allow some silence let them respond exactly so we do a lot of hiring training quite honestly some of the smaller organizations maybe they have 50 employees four managers they just outsource the recruitment entirely to our firm they say you screen them you run the advertisements you seek out great leadership when you get the three final candidates we'll meet with them and we'll pick from from them that that's what many smaller organizations do because they, they just don't want to deal with the administrative burden it's interesting, uh, being a, uh, a government regulated, partially uh, establishment like we are as a radio station, our uh, recruitment process is mandated. Sure. And the focus is on the process and not on the outcome. Exactly. So you have to be, as a manager, focused on the outcome while you're still maintaining the process the sure. way the FCC would like to have it happen. Exactly. Yep. It's, it's amazing. It is so, amazing. Again, encourage uh, those who have businesses, uh, even if you're established, you think things are going in the right direction, uh, the benefit of having your company come in and be an outside ear and eye 
to, to see what's really happening in your company and, and how you can do things better. Thank you. It is a it is a benefit to many many organizations, not just here in in central Pennsylvania where we're we're based out of Lancaster, right. but our firm is constantly adding more clients over into New York, New Jersey, yeah. Ohio, and it's it's been a blessing. And they get in contact with you how? Uh, they can simply call me seven one seven five seven two two one eight three, or they can visit us on our website www in his name hr.com in his name hr.com and and before i let you go just to encourage us uh, encourage us that indeed a kingdom minded organization is possible where we work oh it's a, it, it, it's absolutely possible i mean i'm yeah. on fire for this mark I, I god put this in my heart about 18 months ago I, I i was a vice president of human resources for an international agricultural equipment company for a christian owned organization and I really plateaued. I hit a plateau in my career. It's where I wanted to be. I self-actualized. And God put this process in my heart and said, you know, you need to take this out and provide encouragement in these tumultuous business times. So I'm watching us as we replicate this in a variety of different companies, not just Christian-owned, but we're helping some nonprofits too, some really large nonprofits to save money as well in some of their processes. So I'm very excited about what it is that we have to offer. We didn't have time and I didn't make uh, the opportunity to talk about your career background, but I do want to say thank you for your service. Thank you. To thank the you, Mark. I appreciate I'm that. I'm blessed. Much. All right. Again, the website is in his name hr.com. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. The book is entitled How to Build Kingdom Minded Organizations. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about one such company that's been in the news a little bit over the past few weeks. This is the Mark Daniels Show, and we'll be right back. A last word about corporate values here on the Mark Daniels Show. You've probably already heard more than you ever cared to hear about the recent Chick-fil-A incident, but indeed Chick-fil-A is a clearly kingdom-minded corporation. Just visit the restaurant on a Sunday if you need more proof. Chick-fil-A is unashamed about supporting what they believe as an organization, but it's important to remember that other companies show their support for their corporate values as well, and often do so with total impunity. For example, World News Daily recently reported on the fact that General Mills CEO Ken Powell, through the support of that $15 billion food giant behind gay activists urging Minnesotans to de deny a constitutional amendment in the state defining marriage. Kraft Foods recently featured a rainbow-colored Oreo cookie, along with the caption, Proudly Support Love. In June of 2009, President Obama declared June to be Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month and organizations from the Pentagon to cookie makers have been receiving glowing news headlines in our media ever since. But some organizations and companies are drawing a line in the sand. Recently, the group One Million Moms complained about J.C. Penney when that department store chain's Father's Day catalog featured same-sex duos. But what made the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day stand out was its very positive nature. No one showed up at a single Chick-fil-A restaurant on that appreciation day to protest anything or anyone. It wasn't a boycott, it was the opposite. Families and individuals taking advantage of the opportunity to show their support for traditional marriage by voting with their feet and their appetites without saying a word. An interesting side note, too. I spent part of my afternoon that day on behalf of the radio station, WFIL, at a Chick-fil-A restaurant. I was down in New Jersey and I was confronted by a self-professed gay man who suggested he might just bring his husband out to see me. I don't know what he expected, but what that young man experienced that day at Chick-fil-A was the tolerant and loving nature of people who follow Jesus Christ. This gay man was quite surprised at the polite and respectful treatment he encountered both inside the restaurant and out in the parking lot at my broadcast location. And he should expect nothing less from Christians. That young man's lifestyle choice runs afoul of scriptural standards, not mine. I'll let God be the judge. I support traditional marriage because God invented it, and our nation's founding fathers designed a blueprint for this country that leaned heavily upon its demonstrated strength to provide the foundation for society. So will I protest, boycott, and complain here on the air? Not likely, but I will make my opinion known with my wallet and my vote. Thanks for watching and for listening to The Mark Daniels Show. We'll see you again next time.